when I'm talking to farmers about compaction, I love some of the words that get used. For example, I'm going to eliminate compaction issues. <laughs> you're never going to eliminate compaction issues. This is something you're constantly going to fight your entire farming career, and you can't ever eliminate it. You can minimize the effects of compaction, and that's really what we want to talk about today. Well, ideally, you would stay out of the field until the soil is absolutely perfectly fit in every square foot of the field. Realistically, that almost never happens. There's going to be one little spot in the field that's a little bit too wet or, or whatnot. And man, it's right down towards the end and we've got to get stuff planted or we're not going to have it ready to go before frost comes. So farmers are constantly dealing with this. Or, you know, we got a little sprinkle of rain last night. It may not be perfectly fit right away, but in a few hours it's going to be good. And, yeah, but hold and up, Darren, it. hold up. You're talking just about rain and making it seem like, oh, if I don't have wet soil, I'm not going to have compaction. Guess what? Even on dry soil, you're going to have compaction with today's equipment, even with the equipment of yesteryear. What, what did we have when we had some of the small tractors? We also had very small tires. So when you start looking at the pounds per square inch, that's what a lot of people start talking about today. And that's one of the reasons people have gone to tracks. That's one of the reasons people go to bigger tires, lower pressure. Yes, you can certainly do those things but again we're never going to get rid of compaction we're just simply trying to reduce it because the more compaction you have the more problem your roots are going to have to grow and that's really what this whole discussion comes back to all right let's talk about detecting compaction then all right you say we've got compaction how do we find it out in the field well there's a couple different things you may look at one thing may be a penetrometer now you may not own a penetrometer but Typically, you're going to see uh, an agronomy firm near you will have a penetrometer or a, a soils consultant, this kind of thing. They bring this tool out, they press it down into the soil, uh, and they see as they go down through the soil what the level of resistance is. That would be one way. You could use a penetrometer. The, the penetrometer results are going to vary a little bit depending on soil moisture. If you have a lot of moisture in the soil, it'll push down easy. If you're bone dry and have been for two years, you're probably not even going to get the penetrometer in the ground. But if you've got average moisture conditions, you can get a pretty good reading. The other thing would be if you do some digging. Now, you can do some digging with a backhoe or a skid loader or something and dig a root pit, for example. Or you could just use a post hole digger. And if you use a post hole digger, it only takes a minute. You, you dig that post hole. You could reach your arm down in the hole and push a knife into the side. Typically, you want a blade that's at least four inches long, maybe a little longer. Uh, if you have a one inch blade, you're not really going to feel much resistance coming back up. But if you've got a long blade that you stick into the side of that soil and then you pull it up slowly as you go, you're going to find there's normally at least a couple different layers of resistance in your soil. We call those compaction layers. All right, with the compaction layers, the first thing that we got to think about is how'd they get there in the first place? Most likely, the top one got there because of tillage. So when you're doing tillage, we just encourage you, try to vary the depth. Try to find wherever your compaction is at and get just below that and, and continue moving that around from year to year. If you've got deep compaction layers, those might be natural. We've used a brilliant zone commander, for example. We've called it zone building and gone out with these straight shanks, narrow points, not to bust everything up. We're not huge believers in C shanks and wide points and turning the soil. Usually that doesn't work out the best because all we do is move the compaction down a little bit. What we like to do is kind of slice through those deeper levels of compaction. But the big thing that I want you to think about today is, okay, you're going to have compaction no matter what, anytime you're going over that field. How can we make our soil a little more tolerant to that? Well, one of the biggest things, Darren has been mentioning moisture already a couple of times. Okay, well, think about the moisture. If we can keep the water table down, we're in better shape. So we find that tiled fields have far less compaction. We also find that fields that have lots of calcium have less compaction. Calcium is a much bigger molecule than magnesium. We want good calcium levels, at least 65 to 80 percent calcium in the soil. And then finally, more organic matter means a spongier soil and less chance for compaction. One key point that Brand made early on there was you've got to get just below that compaction layer if you're out there doing tillage. And, and we see this all the time. So every time I go in a field, I like to bring a tile spade with me and I just poke it around in the field as we're walking, looking to see if I find compaction. 
if you do get into that compacted layer and you're actually doing some good out there, it's going to take more horsepower to get that job done. It's going to be a little harder to go fast out in your field, but you have to keep in mind it's not about speed, it's about getting the right job done. In this case, eliminating that compaction layer and managing it on your farm so you can get the best root growth and ultimately the best yields. The other thing that I want you to think about is the first pass over the field always makes the most compaction. So they say that roughly 70% of all compaction, if you go over it 50 times, 70% of the compaction is going to happen the first time over. I don't know if I agree with that necessarily, but the point is if you can manage your traffic patterns out in the field, then you have fewer spots where you have real compaction issues. So again, compaction is tremendously important. We just encourage you look hard at your soil, work on your drainage, improve your calcium and organic matter levels, and do everything you can to stay off that ground when it's wet. Well, one reason you may need to be out in the field is to control our Weed of the Week. We'll show you how to stop this tough weed coming up next. <music>